Hey guys, uh, we've had a bit of a technical hitch here. So the video you're about to see was going to be intercut with us spinning through the uh, Magic Gatherer website. We can't do that right now. So if you want to look at the cards we're talking about, they are in order under the Gatherer website. If you go to Color Order, they're then alphabetical. So we just go through all of those. Um, enjoy. All right. <laughs> it's a long video. And it's just white. Okay. You want the rest, you're going to have to watch them. But yeah. Have fun. Right. Next up, we've got Resolute Archangel, which is a seven drop double white creature angel 4 4 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, if your life total is less than you, your starting life total, it becomes equal to your starting life total. That's a game changer right there. Yeah. You could get what, 19 life for playing that card, and you get a 4-4 four, four flyer on top of it. Very expensive, but could be worth it. I think if you pull it late yeah. game, it could be the bomb that would help you win. Definitely. Because yeah. you're going to go into play it late, late game anyway to get the most out of the life gain ability. As you say, you could go straight from 1 to 20. However, if you look check in the wording, the reason it states starting life total, not 20 life, because obviously in a one-on-one -on -one game, you're always at 20 life. The reason it states that is if you're playing Commander or something like that, you've got a higher start on life total. So you can go immediately back up to 14 in those games. So, can see a bit of fun with it. So next up we have Return to the Ranks. This is an X double white sorcery. Has Convoke. Return X target creature cards with converted mana cost 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So that's to the battlefield straight away from your graveyard onto it. <sighs> Converted mana cost two or less might make it a little bit on the tricky side. You've got to be playing a lot of weenies for that, but it could be a very, very interesting card to play. You can see why it's a rare yeah. in there. White plays really nice, efficient, low mana cost creatures, and early get uh, late game, even if you're only getting back little creatures in limited, you're still getting back creatures. So you're Even if you can run them as chunk blockers. Exactly. You're still getting something back with it. Pretty useful. Yeah. So next up we have Sanctified Charge. This is 5 mana instant. Creatures you control get plus 2 plus 1 to end of turn. White creatures you control also gain first strike at end of turn. So it's kind of like a pumped up version of the spell we saw earlier. So we get all of our creatures get the plus 2 plus 1. Nice effect. White creature control also get first strike. So if you're splashing, the creatures you have in the splash colour that aren't white still get the plus two plus one, and your white creatures get plus plus two plus one and first strike. I would say this is a more efficient version of the spell we saw before. The fact is instant speed makes it good. Really cool, cool, cool combat trick. Tap loads of little creatures. Oh, uh, suddenly the boss a little anymore. Smack. And you're looking at like like we said, token generation within the white yeah. set. There's lots of soldiers floating around, they're white creatures, so they're also going to get the first strike. So in one turn, you can pump up a load of 1-1 one, one weenies into 3-2 weenies with first strike. Yeah. That's a game changer, even if it's just for one turn, because when you attack, your opponent's going to have to either take all that damage, or block it out and lose a load of creatures. Definitely. And what do you lose? A few 1-1s one, and you've paid 6 mana for it. Also, you can keep it for your turn, and in response it, buff up your blockers so when your opponent thinks right that's alright I'm just gonna get rid of their field you can turn around and wipe their cards out. Yeah. So many players forget you can multi-block. You give all your, all your creatures plus two plus one and first strike you can first strike to death a massive creature with all your little dudes. Always remember that. Then we have Selfless Kafar. Kafar. One drop white human cleric 1-1 one, one, and it has the ability for two mana to sacrifice it, the creatures you control get plus one, plus one, till the end of turn. One drop for a 1-1, one, one, that's a first turn creature, and then later game you can then sack it out and buff up your creatures. It's a good card. It's yeah. a staple white card. This is a reprint from Innistrad, yeah. and it's going to be quite a handy card, I think. Yeah, I like it. Fishy. So next up we have Seraph of the Masses. This is a seven mana, double white. Creature Angel Star Star with Convoke, Flying, 
and Seraph of the Masses' power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. This has the potential to be really good, again, in a nice weenie or token generation deck. This can get big, as long as you've kept all those creatures alive, or used earlier abilities to, say, bring back small creatures from the graveyard to play. Pretty efficient, and the fact it's got Convoke means that you can use all those little creatures you've played to tap down to play this guy, or gal, for free, hits the table and is now massive because of all the creatures you've got to play to tap down for it. Pretty efficient. Still, again, you've got to make sure you've got lots of creatures in play for it to be really powerful, and it gets whittled down the more creatures you lose. So it's yeah. not the best angel in, in the game so far, but it could be quite useful if you, in a draft situation. But then also you could play some nice little combat tricks with it. Um, you block in, you haven't got enough to destroy the creature and you're going to die. Uh, what a pity. Wait, hang on a second, let's just play an instant here, let's make two more soldier tokens. Oh, it's just been buffed by, by plus two, plus two. Yeah. You can really um, really play around with your opponent there and, and kind of mess up their, their tactics a little bit or something like that. It's a late game card. It's a seven drop in white, but you can use you can use your convoke ability. So if you are making lots of token generation, you could get it out maybe third turn, possibly. You've got three mana on the table. You've played three creatures. It's going to be maybe fourth turn then. But yeah, it could be quite an interesting card yeah. to, to see floating around. Surprise! It's not a rare. Then we have Sarah Angel, which is a, th a five drop double white creature angel four four flying and vigilance. Five drop for a four f for a four four flying and vigilance. It's gonna get a lot of play. Whatever you're in. Yeah. So Sarah Angel has been in Magic for years, but we're t we're talking way back, early nineteen nineties. Sarah Angel and Sandia Vampire. Vision creatures. And I, for one, am a big fan of Sarah Angel. You can't go wrong with it. A five drop for a four four. All right, you're playing the double white, but by the time you got up to five mana, you, yeah. you've got that double white there. Even if you're, you're doing two colors, it, it's going to be easy enough to play when you get to five. Yeah, I can't see anyone uh, not playing that if they're playing white. Definitely, I wouldn't say it's a card that makes you play white if you draw it, but if you are playing white already, you're going to have to have it in there somewhere. Yeah. So here we have solemn offering. This is a three mana sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, you gain full life. Being able to remove an artifact or enchantment is good. Uh, it kind of works as pseudo removal if your opponent's playing artifact creatures. Uh, and the fact you gain full life is it's pretty good. So disenchant was uh, the standard uh, white back in the day card, destroy target artifact or enchantment, that costs two. So here, for one extra mana on top of that, you also get full life. And full life is a lot. Yeah, pretty efficient. Again, Probably more of a sideboardy type card, but uh, yeah, if you know your opponent's playing a lot of artifacts, if they're playing uh, green or something like that, then you kind of really want to put that in for the removal effect of it. Yeah. The life gain is just a, a little bonus on the side. I Definitely. Think. All right, next up we are looking at Soul of Theros, which is our mythic white from the set. One of our mythic white from the sets. This is one of the Avatar cards. It's a six six for six mana. With vigilance, I mean that's that's just amazing, really. Then it's got um, abilities on top of it. So, for a four mana colorless and two white creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain first strike and life leak until end of turn. That's awesome. That's including himself, so he becomes an eight eight with first strike, life link, and vigilance. That ah. Oh. Then we have exile. We have uh, another one, the same price, so it's four colourless, two white. Exile, Soul of Theros from your graveyard. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain first strike and life link until end of turn. So you can reuse his ability once he's been destroyed. And yeah. that's just. Oh, that is going to see a lot of play. Probably one of the best end game cards in white we've seen so far, actually. Yeah. For Strong. a long time, to be honest. I think that's. That is, that's a pretty amazing white card there, without being a um, Planeswalker. Yeah. I think, I think that's what you're talking, the power of that card is up to the Planeswalker kind of level, I think. Yeah, it's definitely a strong creature, especially in Limited. Uh, so here we have Soulmender, 
This is a one mana creature human cleric. One one tap, you gain one life. Not a bad little guy. As we say, one mana for one one is is okay, and he taps again you one life. Can be pretty useful. Uh, you got to make the decision early game whether you want to hit for the one damage or what. But he makes a nice chump blocker that can also gain you one life just before he dies. Or once your opponent starts playing bigger creatures, you've got a few blockers of your own. You just use him for the life gain ability. Yeah. Hmm. Not a bad yeah. little utility guy. No, I like him. I'd probably play him if I was playing white. Early game, always good to have a few one ones in there. One drops, worth having, and then you got the life gain ability on top. Yeah, useful. Next up, Spectre Ward, which is a 5-drop double white enchantment aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and has protection from all colours. This effect doesn't remove auras. Yeah, that's a good card. Yeah. And once we see the auras are quite useful in white, you've got a nice few creatures that kind of play off these auras. It's going to buff it by 2, played for free, buffing by 2, and um, protection from all colours indestructible really isn't it yeah it's nice and the fact that it uh, explicitly states this effect doesn't remove auras is good if you've got auras from other colours that you've put onto it um, or of course itself because if you made it immune to all colours it would also remove itself because it's white but nice ability so you've got lots of other enchantments on it make it pro all colours keep the auras nice mm -hmm. So here we have Spirit Bonds. This is a two mana enchantment. Whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one white. If you do, put a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Or pay 1 1 1 colourless and 1 white. Sacrifice the spirit. Target non spirit creature gains indestructible at the end of turn. Pretty cool little card. Uh, it can allow you to put. Make more tokens, like the nice little one ones while you play your other creatures. Again, useful in a weenie deck, you need to make more efficient creatures as it goes along. But you can almost also make your big bond indestructible. So let's say you get your soul of Theros, you've uh, slammed it onto the table. Your opponent's been saving that destruction card for just such an occasion. Boom, I'm going to kill that. Sap this guy. No, you're not. Rex face. It does. It's going to be. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Good card. Yeah, and it it makes its own, it makes its own sackers as well, which is the great thing about it. Yeah, I do like that card. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that card in play. Then we have Sungrace Pegasus, which is two drop one white for a one two creature with flying and life link. Yeah, I'm up for that. I'm having that, especially with all the auras and stuff like that that are floating around to buff them up. That creature is going to be sick. 1-2 isn't brilliant, I get that, but Flying and Lifelink, you put Flying and Lifelink on a card, I'm going to be having it for a pre-release. Yeah. Go for it. So in fact it's 1-2, survives a, being hit in the face by a 1-1 one, one flyer. Yeah. Helps it survive a little bit. Pretty All good. those little tokens that have the opponents putting out, your spirits and stuff like that. Beats it down. Here we have Tireless Missionaries. This is 5 mana. For a creature, a human cleric, 2-3. When Tireless Missionaries enters the battlefield, you gain 3 life. Uh, gaining 3 life is good, again. Makes mm. red players cry. Having a 2-3 is not a bad sized body, but the 5 mana cost is quite steep. I can see what the offset is there. You're, you're additional you're paying. Because for a 2-3, if you're paying 3 mana for it, then yeah, okay, I yeah. can kind of see that. So you're paying 2 mana then for 3 life. There's more efficient ways of getting that 3 life into your deck yeah. I think this is this is a filler card that um, be, it, it's a common if you find it useful on pre-release then you can go out and you can find a card that's, that does the job better and is yeah. more efficient when you're building your modern deck when you're building your standard deck so it combos nicely with the Chinese pride mate but on turn 5 you want to be playing something better yeah yeah and it's human cleric as well we haven't seen a lot of that if it was a soldier maybe could change the odds a bit there, but yeah, okay. I think I think some people are going to play it just because it, it seems a bit fancy and it might be quite useful. But if you do like it, then have a look around later on uh, for your standard decks and see what you can do that would be better. Then we've got Triplicate Spirits, which is six drop double white sorcery with Convoke. Put three one one spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Yeah, I can see what they're doing there. 
and you could yeah I I kind of like it but you only get three one ones for six mana it's quite steep yeah um, maybe if you're doing something tricksy making extra tokens when they appear so, um, or you're doing something with your convoke very nice but just on its own I think that's just too expensive yeah it, it, in the limited format for this weekend it could be okay if you're playing a weenie deck and you've got lots it's kind of a nice trick but because it's a sorcery you've got to do it in your own turn it's definitely not going to replace anything in the modern black white tokens deck I mean those spells are way too like spectral possession is way more efficient than this so it's okay but it's not great I think it's a nice introduction to new players to what you can do but there are more effective and efficient ways yeah. of doing it here we have wall of essence which is a do mana creature wall, not four, with defender. Whenever wall of essence is dealt combat damage, you gain that much life. Kind of like reverse life link. Yeah. It's a nice little effect, pretty good early blocker, uh, especially if your opponent tries to swing in with a massive creature without flying, and you just block it all with him, gain all that life. Kind of efficient. Yeah. Pretty cool little blocker. Just don't forget, unless they've got trample, all of their damage gets hit at that wall. So if somehow they're attacking with a 16-16, you then swing in with that guy, chump block, and then you gain 16 life. Yeah. Not don't know if that's possible this, in this game, but yeah, could I, I would play this card. I like I like some good defenders in my deck. Something to really kind of give me give me some um, some defense really. Yeah. Then the last white card we have for you today is Warden of the Beyond, which is a three drop one white human wizard with vigilance and gets a plus two plus two as long as your opponent owns a card in exile. That's quite an interesting card. Um, it does bring up something that I'm, I'm going to mention later on, um, but exiling, there is a bit of exiling in white in this, so that's okay. Um, and then once you can get a card exiled, if you know you're going to be doing that, you've got yourself a 4-4 four, four for a 3-drop with Vigilance. That's nice. I mean, a 3-drop for a 2-2 two, two with Vigilance isn't too bad, especially when you're buffing with Auras, because that's what you're planning on doing, really. With this white, if you're playing Heavy White, you're playing Tokens and you're playing Auras. That's really what I think you're going to be doing out of this deck. Flyers as well. Um, so, yeah, it gets plus 2 plus 2 to opponent has Exiles. That's really good. I it, like that. I really, really like him as a show of what white does. White has like fishing creatures and exiles cards. A lot of white's direct removal is exiling, so it's fun. I'm not saying it's the best card in the world. It probably won't see a huge amount of play in Constructed. It might see a tiny bit, especially in budget decks. But I like the fact that it plays with the exile zone. It's something that other cards have very rarely dealt with. Only things like the wish cards could really affect the exile or remove from game zone, things like that. But it's just a nice little interaction that fits in really nicely with white, and I think that's fun. Yeah. Okay, so that's all the white cards uh, for that set. Uh, a couple of things that spring to mind. Um, we haven't got O-Ring this year. No. They haven't reprinted O-Ring in, in, in the standard. I'm, I'm shocked by that. I really am. Uh, no Griffin Rider either. Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple of cards that are kind of sad of their absence there, really. But I think there's going to be a, no, a nice bit of fun there with tokens and things like that. Yeah. So. White seems like quite a strong colour actually. It's got some efficient creatures, it's got some removal. Feels good. Yeah, and there's a couple of cards. Yeah, there's a couple of cards that if I pulled I'd go, yeah, I'm playing white today. Straight away, just without looking at anything else. There's a few in there that I think would really um, would really help me play white and love. Definitely. Okay guys, um, we'll be doing the rest of the colours if we can uh, manage to get through them all. We've only just started and we've got a few more colours left to do yet. And I think this video's taken a while. We'll see if we can upload it. All right, guys. We will see you on the next video. Till next time. Oh, I just hope to go back before this. Yeah. <laughs>
We've still got the video though, yeah. so that's that's all right. Um, seriously, are you seriously? Oh well, like you say, we saw the video. We can still put the other stuff along it later on, I guess. Yeah, we can just release these videos. Um, us talking about the cards. And then, when I get some time, I'll slide the cards into the video. Yeah. I cannot believe that. F9 for video capture. You bastard. Yeah, Marta. Just... He was doing it just before, wasn't it? I'll just chop this video either side. Should we just if do you want to carry on doing them? Yeah, I'm happy to get them out there. Uh, cool. We'll just chop either, chop this one either side and then 